Welcome once again to the Sage. Ah, what a journey. A journey of pure pleasure. As usual, I'm Dr. Kechi Obwago, your guide on this show. And in this particular show, I made immense discoveries. But we'll come to that. First of all, what is for us the focus, the issue for this episode? It is our world, a recognition of our world as a world of inequality. An acceptance of the fact that approximately half of the world still struggle to be equal to the other half. I mean the women, the issues of gender inequality. Within gender inequality is the issue of Professions, means of making livelihoods, ways of earning a living, in which some particular areas remain dominated by men. And we often find that it takes women of rare courage to venture, to muster up the courage, the determination, the intelligence, the hard work that is necessary to enter and indeed to survive in a male-dominated profession. And yet, it's important that they do, because for our world to be truly balanced, for we to maximally impact our world, all of us have wonderful things, attributes to bring into it. And so for many of these male-dominated professions, it's important that the women be active partners in that area of business. I discovered two wonderful treasures today in the area of engineering. Yeah, I say that again, engineering. Two incredible women engineers. And because there were such gems, each, each one of them, I couldn't make up my mind who to ask to come talk to you. So I brought both of them. Stay with me. You'll meet these two wonderful ladies in the next segment. Welcome once again to The Sage. And thank you for having stayed with us. You are going to enjoy this. This for me has been a very, very successful exploration where I, I discovered so many treasures, I was spoiled for choice, I didn't know what to do. You know when you suddenly find a lot of germs? Mm. I decided to keep all of them. And so I have for you a wonderful show. We have talked about the fact that we're going to look at the male-dominated profession of engineering. And we're going to talk to some Amazons, women of timber and caliber, as they say, colloquially, who have indeed made it in that amazing profession. And as I researched, as your guide, I found two, two wonderful specimens. And I said, mm -mm, why deprive you of the pleasure? So I brought both of them. So on the stage with me today, I have two amazing ladies. Two amazing women engineers who have done it all. Listen to their story, you're going to be amazed yourself. But let me let me introduce them. Let me start by doing that. Let me start with the lady on the extreme left, with Valerie Agbiragba, who is the head of renewable energy in the Niger Delta Power Holding Company located here in Abuja, but she's come to talk to you, not about that, but about her amazing, amazing career as a professional engineer. Valerie, welcome. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. And next to her, an equally formidable lady. It is indeed my pleasure to introduce Funlola Ojelade. I have to practice that name, eh? so that I get it perfect. I hope it was pitch perfect. <laughs> uh, an engineer, 
um, who is the um, now let me get your your title right manager of industrial waste in the currency production unit at the Nigeria Security Printing and Mint PLC. You know, I don't know whether some of you viewers know what printing, minting mean. That is um, something close up about money. And so this is a powerful lady to know. <laughs> um, Funlola, you're so welcome. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. It's my pleasure. When I read their resumes, as engineers, as women engineers. It was truly formidable. So I'm going to leave them to tell their story. That's what the show is all about. Um, they've kindly consented to share, um, to help you understand their journey. It's never an easy journey, but they have made it. And so when we have the privilege of meeting people who have made it, um, we can only be wise and do what is wise and learn from you. So thank you once again for being here. And so ladies, let me start by saying, please tell us a little about yourself. Let's start with, who are you, you know? Um, let us let me start with Valerie. And I will interchange it as, if you give me a good smile, I go to the person who gives me <laughs> <laughs> the best smile. Yeah. So Valerie, let's start with you. What was it like? What was your early life like? Yeah. Um, thank you once again for inviting me to this show. Uh, I've watched a few and I thought, oh, this is a very good show to be able to be a part of. Uh, my name is Valeria Aguirre Basque, so the Fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineering. Uh, I graduated from engineering school about 30, 31 years ago, and I've been practicing engineering since then. Presently, I'm the general manager of renewable energy of Niger Delta Power Holding. But just like she said, we are not here talking about renewable energy. That's an interesting thing to talk about when you see women in engineering and renewable. But I'm here to talk about my career path as an engineer. Um, it wasn't smooth sailing. I never really wanted to read engineering. I, most times, if you go to, to schools, you ask some students, what do you want to be here? I want to be a doctor, I want to be a pharmacist. I was one of those I wanted to be a doctor. And for three consecutive years, I did what they call jam wanting to read medicine but it just never was <laughs> you um, wanted to be a doctor like girls well, eh? like, yeah, <laughs> and like you know, we say my mother will always want to and it would be good for her to have a daughter to say yeah i'm the mother of a doctor and she was always happy when i said i wanted to read medicine she encouraged me but like i said it was never to be i found myself being admitted after three tries to read engineering and so that set a new career path for me i think the lord had chosen a career path for you yeah <laughs> i mean i would tell you that, that it was actually god's chosen because i got to realize that i mean i can't stand blood like i say oh dear for somebody yeah. who wanted to be a doctor, yeah, I wanted to be a doctor. <laughs> and one of the things that it's so irritating to me that is very i can't stand smell <laughs> I, have, I have a very sensitive uh, smell and um, sense and so I asked myself later how did you want to read medicine I mean you can't stand blood you can't stand smell then what were you doing were you looking for you wanted to be a medical doctor so like you said it was God choosing my path for me and it's been interesting this past um, three decades of being an engineer and I could talk about hold it. on you will talk about yeah, because yeah. that's why we're you know we we're yeah. so privileged that you're yeah. here but before you go on to that let me ask turn to funlola, funlola yeah. and say what about you how did you come to be an engineer okay i grew up in a family of um, six children i'm following a boy and um he's my mentor and life coach uh, He's a civil engineer. Aren't you lucky? <laughs> he dragged his si younger sister yeah, everywhere, I'm everywhere, sure. Everywhere he goes. So he's a civil engineer, and he had a great impact in me um, choosing to study engineering. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was how I, but of course, it, it initially growing up, um, by the time I was in secondary school, my math was poor for my first two years. So at that time, I wasn't thinking of what I would become. Maybe 
I think the time I wanted to become a nurse because there was a neighbor nurse who had who dressed very nicely. I was going to say, I bet you liked her uniform. <laughs> And I will make paper and put it on my head <laughs> so I could be a nurse. <laughs> but of course, as time went on, my biology was bad and all that, so it's not something I could go near. But it was actually in my form three in secondary school. We had form one, form two, form three then mm -hmm. that I picked up in mathematics because we had a change of teacher. Okay. So now when I begin to talk to young ones about studying engineering, I tell them that the teacher who teaches you at the beginning has a lot to a, a lot of role to play. Mm -hmm. if, if I didn't have that change of teacher in form three, I wouldn't become an engineer today because mathematics is the strength of the engineer. And um, mm -hmm. so it was that form three that I got it. My first two years I flunked it because the teacher could not understand what she was saying. It was not a Nigerian, it's a Philippine. And I just couldn't understand what she was saying. So and of course, you could follow. follow the subject yeah. itself, yeah. So when we had a teacher who was Nigerian and spoke the way my mother spoke, I could understand what she was saying. <laughs> I could follow. And that was, it turned out to be my best subject. So that was how I got into engineering and studied. That's very interesting. It, it, it's amazing the way... Uh, at different circumstances, lead us up a chosen career path. What about your family background? You know, what were the parents any influence on that? You know, apart from the choice of subjects and helping you, um, who was it that was telling me she had a teacher parent? Mm -hmm. uh, my, my mom was a school head mistress. <laughs> she retired at this head mistress. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you too? Yeah, wow. And she actually wanted Yours was a school head mistress too? Yes, she was a wow, wow, this, yeah. you know, I think we should all aspire to mothers with that, that school head mistress. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so she really wanted, I mean, right from the beginning, you must go to a good secondary school, have good foundation, and then get a good university. So I went to St. Mara Doherty Girls Grammar School in Guinea, and I'm always very proud to say I'm from there. You know, you gave me a good It's foundation. not as good as Holy Child, though. No, you can't, you can't compare. <laughs> <laughs> but it gave me a good foundation and just like she said i wasn't good in mathematics i wasn't that good let me put it so those who were ready to take engineering took what they called further maths because i never wanted to yeah, yeah maths, additional yeah. maths you know yeah in my school i think it was called further maths. yeah it used yeah. to be further maths it then further it became maths. additional maths yeah. i think yeah it was mm. further maths but i didn't take further maths all those who wanted to read engineering who knew where they were going took it so I wasn't built for it. But because of the foundation I had in the secondary school, I guess when my career path changed, I could easily fit in. Even though at the time I struggled with a few subjects in university. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then it was good saving. I had a good foundation. My mother really wanted a good education. But like I said, should have loved to be the mother of a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> because when I got the admission to read engineering, it actually read mining engineering. Okay. And then she asked, what is mining engineering all about? And they told her, mining coal, mining this, gold, and all. And at that time, there were lots of collabs of black people in South Africa. Reporting okay, okay. And that was what... She... Yeah, and then she got to know about that. And it's like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> you know? So what she, I mean, how could you read the cause that people are dying? But she allowed me, like I said... I'm going to school, let me take the admission. I will change after one year to biochemistry and then finally navigate my way back to medicine. So she allowed me to go, but I didn't read mining, but it was a department with mining and metallurgical engineering. So I opted for metallurgical engineering. I didn't want to- You wanted it. the gold, eh? Yeah. I didn't want my mother to die of her. Yeah, she wanted the gold. <laughs> so I went to metallurgical engineering. I'd rather process it. Uh, to the, yeah, that, to then to be mining, mining it. Out, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I opted for metallurgical engineering. How interesting. Then, what about you? Did your mother yeah, influence my, that? Because my, my mom, you know, is a teacher, or was a teacher, and now she, she's old, she doesn't teach anymore. But um, the way she brought us up, all her children, was from the time you're able to hold a pencil at the age of two, she starts teaching you how to write. Ah. Oh. Mm -hmm and teaches you, you know, arithmetic from one to three, teaches you how to read. You know, she, she used the Buya Yorubas, she uses the Yoruba alphabet to teach you how to read, saying that the Yoruba alphabet is pronounced the way you write it. 
Okay. The English alphabet is different. Yeah. They will say the four. English are purposefully dis difficult. Yes. Yeah. The H is called F is called F. A child will get confused. That so she wants something. She will first teach you to the Yoruba alphabet so that she can learn how to read. Then so now I can pronounce anything I say. I can actually because I can. Can you say Obuago? Because my name is usually a tough one. Yeah, when I usually when I hear people say, I'll say, Can you please spell it? Because then I'll be able to now pronounce, pronounce it. So that so that was how we, we grew up, you know, learning from childhood. But and that that had a lot of influence on us, all the children. You know, we of course my, my father is uh, was an agri economist. He's, he's dead now. He, an Oxford trained agri economist, and he also liked education. And he used to say that he would have been an engineer. You know, when my brother and I studied engineering, the third person wanted to study. My mother said, "No, I want a doctor." <laughs> <laughs> These doctors are in high demand. <laughs> they are in high demand. So my mother refused that, but she wasn't going to because she didn't like. Even though she scored an A in biology, she didn't like it. You know, so she wanted to be an engineer. Too, so she just opted for something else. But but you know, my they, they had a great role to play in in bringing us up into the uh, people that. Were, all of us are today, you know, learned people, you know, going for very high uh, marks. That, that's 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 amazing. That that's very interesting. Um, we'll take a break. When we come back in the next segment, we'll get the ladies to tell us. Now they they did manage to become engineers. What has been their journey within the field of engineering? Stay with us. We'll be back. Welcome back. What an amazing journey. What an amazing story. Two remarkable ladies. And yet we haven't even started. They still have so much to tell. When we took a break, they had told us what made them decide to become engineers. How did it come about? Now, I think it's time to ask you, so what was the training like? And what were the early years of practicing your profession like? I will start with you this time. We won't let Valerie take take <laughs> take. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this, I, I schooled at the University of Ife. It was Ife when I entered. By the time I finished, it had changed to Obafemi. And Walla Walla University. University, okay. And um, I, I liked my time at Ife. I liked the campus because it's beautiful. And um, and the, the the work well, I, I didn't find it too rigorous. I must confess, there were a few subjects that were a little difficult for me, you know. But um, I was that is the same for every student. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but, but it was something I signed in for, and like I said, engineering is basically mathematics. Mm -hmm. And because I love mathematics, I was anyone virtually all the subjects we did mm -hmm. had to do with mathematics you know, whether you are doing electrical engineering mechanical uh, department and all that all of them had a way you needed to solve some problems you know so it, it wasn't um too it wasn't really so too, you're a problem solver yeah can i bring my own life problems for you <laughs> <laughs> that's not engineering yeah not engineering eh okay okay and now i'm disappointed <laughs> So, so um, going through school was not too difficult, I must confess. And I had a good time at CFA. And then I graduated and did my youth service. I started, actually started my engineering career from my youth service. I had done some with Bene Cement Company, we were producing cement. And I was in quality control. That's the one that is now Dangote Cement. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. So you were there in the early days, so to say. Early days, yes. Yes. Early days, and um, so I was in quality control, checking the the time that the cement was set and determining whether I was good enough and all that. Then after that, I worked with Ajakuta Steel Company. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then the same level Ajakuta was ninety eight percent complete in nineteen ninety one when I started. That's in the state it is now, 98% complete. It never, we never produced any steel, even as a steel company. 
but I was in the uh, power producing plant. Initially, I was moved to a carbon dioxide production plant for the foundry, but because it was not working, I was taken to because we were generating our own electricity mm -hmm. in the Jakarta Steel Company, and we took water from River Niger to run the to run the turbo to run the power plant in the turbines. So that was where where I was, and it was it was nice. It was good engineering experience. You know, yeah. And you you didn't find that your gender mattered. No, for, for me, I think maybe I'm just not a very observant person. Let me put it that way, because this thing is always coming up. You know, whether you know, who, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the only female there, it doesn't make a difference. But we had another female who wasn't in my plant, you know, who was also mm -hmm. an engineer. But I didn't think I was out of place. Okay. And uh, I didn't, if anybody treated me out of place, I didn't feel it. So I left by applying for a master's degree in the University of Lagos so that I could go out of the, uh, the steel city, which was an enclosed environment. So I, after my master's, I didn't go back there. I actually you know, went into IT for a while. I was doing computers. Computers just become becoming popular then. Then Windows 95 just came. Uh, so I was I had a training school. I did a little bit of that. You know. So before I now, I, I left. I worked in computers for like up to five, four, five years or so. I'm looking at Valeria, and, and I think she wants to, but mm -hmm. talk about her own. She's she's saying to herself, yeah. "For sure, it's going on and on. <laughs> for Lola is going on and on." So I now went to yeah. in a meeting where I am practicing now. Printing and minting. Okay, that's yeah. very interesting. So, where we make money. I make money for a living. I like to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Does any of it go into your account? Unfortunately, Unfortunately except, yeah. except, except what I work for. That I'm, <laughs> like, like a teller in the bank. Yeah. <laughs> money your front, one penny <laughs> was not missed out of that. And if it misses, then you yeah, don't close work. You are not closing work. You got it. <laughs> not Thank you so much. That's, that's amazing. That's very interesting. We'll turn over to Valerie. But the meat of the matter is still coming because we're still going to get you to talk to, uh, to us about the association. But tell us about the career path in, in engineering. Yeah, through university, it, it, was, it was easy in the sense that I had a lot of assistance from my schoolmates. Like I said, when I got in, I wasn't sure I was going to continue with engineering. But with my course advisor and the head of the department talking to me, and he had a chat with me. Because they looked at my result, white result, and like I said, physics, I had A1 in physics. So everybody think it must be hot. Mathematics, I didn't have any. I had a C4. No, I had a C4 in mathematics, but physics, I had A1. And in biology, I had a 6. So you want to go back to biochemistry, but your stronger subjects are physics and mathematics. So why do you want to? And I kept explaining you because this is what doctors do. They save lives. <laughs> they help people to have a better living. But we do. Yeah, I, I totally understand. <laughs> but when they expose me to engineering, you know, engineering is not just like you said, it's about problem solving. But not the physical, oh, I'm a human being, I don't have money, I can't solve that problem for you. But I can teach you how to do it. If you engineer. do maintain, like, yeah. well, like she does, you. Able to solve that problem, you know? <laughs> but when they told me engineering is all about this, you look at everything you do, the house you are living in, engineering, the road you are driving on is engineering the water, everything. In fairness, my lecturers exposed me to engineering. Okay. And I saw it. Like, oh, that's that's amazing. That's good yeah. because that's what they're supposed to do, that's actually. That's what they're supposed to do. Yeah. But I guess it's because they didn't want to lose me. Yeah. <laughs> that, you know? yeah. So, yeah. I've done A-levels, so I wasn't having issues with my prelim, you know, because mm. I, while I was waiting to go into medicine, I did A-levels. and mm -hmm. So, I've done that red pink paper exam, which a lot of people run from. Mm -hmm. So prelim was not a tough time for me. It was like, you know, just walk through. So I guess they don't want I, to I don't know that. whether they still do prelim in the universities, do they? they in our time, they do. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. In our time. So they all just call it prelim. Yeah. The NMC in my first year. Okay, but yes, because we used to do a prelim. Yeah, yes. Exactly. So it was easy for me. Yeah. And then they convinced me. And later I looked at that engineering was more like making life a better place for people. So... I decided to remain in engineering. 
Um, I had difficulties, just like you said, in some subject, engineering, drawing. It was tough for me. So even when I couldn't complete my assignment, I had one of my very good friends. He was reading a Greek engineering then. He stays with me in the drawing room to make sure that I finish my assignment. So my colleagues were quite good. My schoolmates mm -hmm. were good. They helped me. They adopted you. you know, they adopted they me as their little sister. Some of them would say I'm their little sister because a few were older than me. But then it was good. I yeah. enjoyed it. Even when I had a problem with one of my lecturers who, who sang the song for me, I never heard the song. He said, you use what you have to get what you want. Wow. By he started even as back, far yeah, back as that. Indeed. It wasn't that bad, but it was there. And you use what you have to get what you want. And I came back crying to my schoolmates and they are like, don't worry, it cannot happen. Because we're about to go in for our internship. Mm. And so if I fail that course, that meant automatic one year. Because wow. I couldn't take it in my second semester. Mm. So I had to come back and take that course. So automatically I was going to have an extra year. And they told me not to worry, we watch out. We know that we won't fail it. So but they advised me on what to do. Never to go to that part of the school building. Cut it off, eh? Let you cut it off, you know. Everywhere I'm going to, I, if you want to go out, call me. One of my male colleagues must be with me. Oh, and how, the how nice. came out. Yeah. And then the result finally came out. I saw a D. We, valid result is how we ran to the boards to check and I saw a D. Who I can go for internship. <laughs> that was 